I said, don't get it, don't arrest her without a confession. You know, do everything right just because you think she did it. Schenectady County Assistant DA Alan Gabell was one of those who thought that Mary Beth Tinning did it. After all, without any explanation over a 14-year period, every one of her nine children had died suddenly and without warning. The family's deadly secret began to unravel in 1985 when Tinning called a friend in a panic to say that baby Tammy Lynn was lying still on the changing table. Police had more than once questioned how so many children could die mysteriously, but they had nothing to go on. The medical community attributed death to other causes other than homicide, and there were autopsies. Gabelle says pediatricians passed her around from doctor to doctor because no one wanted to have anything to do with her. It was when she refused the offer of a SIDS monitor with the final child, Tammy Lynn, that her new doctor became suspicious. Police eventually came back again to the house on Michigan Avenue, and this time they took the 42-year-old woman in for questioning. That's when the lucky break happened. Bill Barnes was the state police investigator who knew Tinning as a child. She gave him a hug and a kiss when he came to question her. What did you say to her to get her to confess? This can't be natural, and there's got to be a reason for it, and that uh, she admitted that she had killed the, the children. It was as not, simple it was, as that? It was easy, really. It was simple. She had a need to tell, to confess? I think so. Bill Barnes, by all accounts, was being modest. He had a confession in four minutes. I believe that she did it. I really did. I thought she, she was responsible. And uh, I think she felt that. You know, she never resisted that. Tinning's attorney, Paul Callahan, told me she insisted the confession the was forced. Based upon what my client told me and what she testified to in the hearing that we had before the trial, the yes, it was coerced. Famed forensic pathologist Dr. Michael Bodden was called into the Tinning case by Schenectady uh, Police Chief Dick Nelson. Nice. Bodden says his review of the eight deaths showed clearly that this had to be murder. It's not possible to have nine sudden infant death uh, cases, just mathematically, statistically not possible. There's still always going to be, I think, this lingering question in people's minds, how could this happen? Certainly Joe Tinning has to take some blame for that. Some other husband might have been more active. Through it all, Joe Tinning stayed by his wife's side, even after the courtroom exploded with the allegation that Mary Beth Tinning had tried to poison him. The story was that she was having an affair with somebody, with somebody in the community and she therefore tried to kill her husband by putting, uh, I think it was barbiturates, in his soup. But he refused to believe that she would have done him any harm. I had an overdose. Whether she gave it to me, I'm not sure. I said, your family is gone, your kids are dead, and your wife admitted she just tried to kill you. I said, how do you feel? He thought for a minute. He said, gee, it's God's will. If it's God's will, that's what it should be. Ultimately, it came down to this. A jury in this courtroom accepted the confession and rejected the defense argument that the children had died of a genetic disease, something that Paul Callahan still questions to this day. Her mother-in-law, Edna Tinning, testified that any of these kids, when you picked them up, it was like a, a sack of water. There was these kids didn't have muscle tone. She went off to prison proclaiming her innocence. Now she's done 20 years, but the parole board says she'll stay in prison for at least two more. DA Bob Carney, for one, thinks that's just. How can we trust that she will abide the law uh, and not commit new crimes when she hasn't even accepted any responsibility for the crime she was convicted of?